is our so. His name is Martin Choi. But he has one problem. He's sick and doesn't know what's wrong. So he heads to the doctor. The doctor says, Hmm, I think I know what the problem is. Your electron transport chain doesn't seem to be working. And as a result, your proton gradient is significantly reduced. Let me explain some more. The mitochondria is the main powerhouse of the eukaryotic cell. It uses F1 ATP synthase to convert ADP into ATP. But what powers this reaction? Why does it occur? The key lies in the proton motor force. This force is created across the mitochondria's intermembrane by gathering a higher concentration of protons in the intermembrane space than the concentration in the matrix. In prokaryotes, the process remains the same, but the reaction occurs on the plasma membrane. In order to create a higher concentration outside, the protons must flow from the inside out. Like the cell plasma membrane, the mitochondria membrane isn't ion soluble. To solve this, cells have enzymes that act as ion channels, allowing the facilitated diffusion or active transport of the protons. Again, cells want to attain a proton gradient, in which the intermembrane space has a greater concentration of protons than the mitochondrial matrix. The key thing to understand is that the movement of protons against the gradient from low to high requires energy, and requires more energy as the gradient becomes larger. The energy to create the proton gradient is taken from glucose in the form of reducing power held in NADH and FADH2. A cell turns glucose in 10 NADH molecules and 2 FADH2 molecules. The reducing power stored in NADH is employed by the ion channel known as the electron transport chain to move protons. NADH moves to the first protein in the electron transport chain. Because the proteins have higher electronegativities than NADH, they will pull off two electrons and a proton, oxidizing NADH to NAD+. Each protein in the electron transport chain is more electronegative than the last. As a result, the electrons will be pulled along, releasing free energy as they move. The free energy that has been released is now free to be used to move protons across the membrane. The electron transport chain has a greater purpose than simply turning reducing power into free energy. As the electrons jump from protein to protein, releasing free energy, certain proteins on the chain, such as coenzyme Q, will employ this energy to move protons against the gradient. The electron transport chain will continue to produce a gradient until the energy to move against the gradient is greater than the energy produced by the electron transport chain. Once electrons have moved to the end of the electron transport chain, they jump from the final protein to oxygen to produce water. This transfer of electrons allows the chain to accept another electron and continue functioning. This is also the reason that we breathe oxygen. Prokaryotic cells can also use other electron acceptors, but oxygen is the most effective. So why do cells want a proton gradient across their inner membrane? or plasma membrane in the case of prokaryotes. The key is the biomolecular motor, F1 ATP. This motor works by rotating to produce energy. Just as a fan rotates by having air flow through it, the rotation of the F1 ATP motor is caused by the flow of protons. Like all diffusion, protons will diffuse from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration. Because of the electron transport chain, this is exactly what happens. In order for protons to flow from the higher concentration in the intermembrane space to low concentration in the mitochondrial matrix, they must pass through what is called an ion channel. In this case, F1 ATP synthase acts as the ion channel and provides facilitated diffusion through the intermembrane space to the mitochondrial matrix. Since it's within the gradient, it requires no energy. As the protons flow through F1 ATP, energy is produced for the cell. Once the protons flow back through F1 ATP, they can either bind to oxygen at the end of the electron transport chain to produce water, or they can be channeled back across the membrane by the electron transport chain to maintain the proton gradient.
The proton gradient is crucial because it drives the production of ATP. By maintaining the gradient through the electron transport chain, the cell can use the energy stored within the gradient to power ATP synthase through facilitated diffusion. Wow, thanks, Doc. Martin meets up with his friend NZB, who is an enzymatic biofuel cell. Him and Martin have a lot in common. They both rely on proton gradients. We know how Martin relies on proton gradients. NZB works like a normal battery, except that the proton gradients created between his two electrodes is what powers him up and produces voltage.